welcome to Furious Driving and today I'm at the wheel of a Bauer E21 3 Series 323i Top Cabriolet. And if you like the look at this and other reviews of interesting and different cars, then please do hit like, subscribe and smash the bell notification down the bottom to find out when more are coming out. Now, this car is currently for sale with Fairmount Sports and Classic Cars in Essex. Check out the link in the description below to find out more information. Now on with the review. Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and today we're looking at something a little bit unusual, a mainstream, but not really, convertible BMW. In fact, we shouldn't even really be calling it a convertible because they didn't at the time, because they actually called this the 3 Series Top Convertible. So this is based on a BMW E21, the first generation of the 3 Series as we know it, and it was launched in 1975 initially as a two-door coupe only, or a two-door hardtop sedan, I think BMW does call these weird things. But it's a nice day for a drive. Let's get this thing on the road and talk about it out there. So yes, as I was saying, this is not a convertible. This is not even, although it looks like it, a Targa. Mostly because Targa was patented as a name by Porsche in the 1970s. So it might look like it, but honestly it really isn't. Now this car, like all E21 Bauer convertibles, or top cabriolets, started life as a hardtop, because BMW really were missing a trick. They did not go in all out with every possible shape of body configuration at the outset, which would have made them an awful lot of money if they had, but they didn't. Much like with the E30 Touring, it took a homebrew special from an engineer in his weekends to convince them that the Touring was a good idea and they put that into production. So three years after the E21 came onto the market, in stepped Bauer, who had a long history with BMW. And so they took on the role of building their own version of the convertible. In fact, a complete finished 3 Series would turn up at their factory and then they would cut the roof off because that's the best thing to do with a brand new car is to take a big saw to it. But that's how we got this. But, of course, because this started out as a hardtop car, it didn't have all the strengthening and bracing that a convertible would need. So they had to put in something or leave something in there to give it that extra rigidity. Hence the fact we've got this Targa rollover bar instead, a slightly unusual hoop, which gives it its very distinctive look. You can always tell a Bauer convertible straight away just from seeing that roof line. It does look a little bit like a pram with the roof up, but it does make it have a certain exclusive cachet. Of course, that was a trick that wasn't exactly uncommon and unheard of in the motor industry. Porsche had been doing it on the 911 for a few years already, and it was borrowed later on by the Golf GTI and the Rover 200, amongst, well, I'm sure, many others. But to differentiate themselves from Porsche and their Targa, they called it the Top Cabriolet because it's still not completely a convertible, even though you do have a full open top. This large centre panel here lifts out completely and can be stowed away in the boot or left at home if you know it's not going to rain. And the back of the car, like on a Fiat 500C, folds away on top of the boot lid. And that's another differentiation between this and a full convertible from the factory. Because it's kept the rear bulkhead and the rear boot line, it doesn't fold into the boot space. It folds up on top of the boot, which gives it a slightly unusual characteristic look, but it does make it all the more practical because you don't lose any boot space when you put the roof down, making a really good practical four-seater tourer. So four people and their very extensive picnic can all travel together in comfort. Of course, that big roll hoop does mean the car still handles a lot like a BMW when you go through the corners. It does roll a little bit though. Now this wasn't a cheap option and so they didn't sell a huge number. 4,595 in total apparently, that's all they made. Let's take a quick look around the cabin. 
So as you step into the car, you can clearly see the Targa roof bracing and the old roof frame, which gives the car the strength and rigidity to not be all floppily duffly on the corners. Step inside, it is a standard E21 door. And of course you've got everything you'd expect on E21 door furniture. We've got the nice uh, molded patterned vinyl door card with these horizontal lines, giving a bit of interest in pattern. Then you have these electric mirrors hidden in the center of the door where you might expect something more normal like a door handle. The door handle itself is hidden here underneath the grip so you have to squeeze to exit. Manual windows and a door pocket, quite unusual for a 1980 car. It's quite a high class touch to have a door pocket on a car at this time. Stepping inside we have got the cosseting BMW bucket seats giving you great grip for the passenger and driver in the front. We have really quite a modern looking instrument binnacle and dashboard for a car that is really a product of the 1970s. It looks far more modern and advanced than that. Here we've got the wraparound BMW instrument cluster and dashboard area, all driver focused, driver facing. Big, big dials in the dashboard. So your speedo going up to 140 on the left, your rev counter redlining at six and a half thousand RPM on the right. And just basics like the fuel and temperature and a few telltale warning lights apart from that. And then starting with the top of the dashboard, we notice this whole top area towards the windscreen is actually raised away from us. It's like a bit of brutalist architecture. I guess that would be kind of the influence that would be going on at that time, the clean, modern, functional, industrial design of the mid seventies. So our air vents are up here, pushed away from ourselves. The central one can be switched off. A speaker in the center, that is quite interesting. In case it's a lower spec car that only came with one speaker. And then another air vent over on the far left. So we have good ventilation and then additional vents for the passengers here in the center. So we've got a total of eight air vents in the dashboard, which is a lot of air vents. I'm going to have to say that. And on the top here, next to this, probable speaker we have a tiny tea shelf area so we can put our snacks and picnic items down here which is actually recessed underneath there so you could use it as a, a grip bar if you've got a nervous passenger they can grab hold of that bit of dashboard if they're really scared as i say this all curves towards the drivers so coming down this area here is curved away towards the passenger because this everything else here is facing me in the driving seat nothing else for the passenger to play with beyond a glove box and a door cubby in the center though, we've got the twin air vents, our large hazard light switch, very, very modern looking dials for the uh, air ventilation. It looks a bit like what Vauxhall were using well into the 1980s. No air conditioning, of course, but we do have heating and ventilation just there. Again, very modern, very simple. Underneath which we have got a Blauplunkt radio cassette, which in this car, I believe will be stereophonic. Then underneath that, we've got a big old ashtray. They were anticipating heavy smoking in this car. 12 volt socket slash lighter just there and underneath that a huge area for oddments oddment storage is a new and evolving field in the late 70s early 80s and they were embracing it wholeheartedly around here you can even store pens and coins around the bottom of the gear shift the gear shift itself a five speed manual and it's a lovely slick thing as well so again at the forefront of technology on this car because five speed manuals were very much state of the art when this car came out and only high-end exotica really had it now moving back from the gear shift towards the handbrake but first of all check out the carpet pattern it's a weird moire of white dots on black or possibly black dots on white that's an argument for another time but then we've got the handbrake which is the longest handbrake handle i think i've ever seen it goes all the way back past the seats not be useful information but there you have it now back to the front of the car we have the steering wheel which is very very bmw it's thin rimmed four spoked and four horn buttoned as well we need to give this a horn test oh ignition on twin tone nice oh and also turning the ignition on, you'll notice we have got a digital clock here in the center of the uh, rev counter hmm fancy on the right hand side, we've got three unmarked black switches, two pull-out toggles, one does something, one does the lights, and then a mystery unmarked one which glows green when you turn it on. I should probably read the book. Now looking above, the headroom is infinite because target top, we have got no roof above us. We do have this big solid rollover hoop, which gives us added security if there was an accident, but of course it does add a huge amount of rigidity to the strength of the shell. Let's climb in the back and see how it feels in there. Now, having started life as a two-door coupe, it is, of course, flippy front seats to get into the back. And then you are in. We've got fixed windows here because that's the way they came. And a big area of roof, which is folded down behind us. 
We do feel though like we are in a convertible because we've got the sun above us, the open air feel. It does feel slightly strange like you're neither in a convertible nor a hardtop because my head is sitting kind of outside the car but my shoulders are sitting inside the car. It's a slight odd experience but I'm sure you get used to it fairly quickly. Amenities for rear seat passengers include more ashtrays and that's kind of it. Oh there's a light up there as well. Those are your amenities. It is 1980 after all so you should think yourself lucky to get that. And this is of course a flip front opening bonnet and here we have the Bosch K-Jetronic in fuel in mechanical fuel injection. So under the bonnet of this particular example is the 323i engine, the six cylinder fuel injected with the Bosch mechanical straight six, which is a, a wonderful piece of machinery making about 145 horsepower, which was a huge amount at the time. Though apparently you could have had this with any engine you fancy anything from the range, although these days I swear you'd be hard pushed to find anything except that straight 6323i. Maybe they sold most of them, maybe all the survivors have been converted to this, I don't know. But they built it for four whole years, 1978 through to 1981, making it quite a rare and exclusive beast these days. And it was, though, a bit of a victim of its own success because BMW saw how popular this was and, of course, later on with the E30, they did put their own version into production. However, the story for Bauer didn't end there because they did their own version of the E30, selling over 14,000 of those. And when the E36 came along, they even went along and did a sliding hardtop four-door saloon which I swear I have never even knew about until today. So just who are Boer or Bauer as you may or may not say it? Well, they are Carrosseria Bauer, a Stuttgart-based high-end coach builder who have been around since 1910. They started building convertibles in 1927 and uh, first teamed up with BMW who were looking for someone to do a convertible version of their then 320 and 327 models uh, in 1937. And it was a long lasting and successful collaboration between the two companies which meant that when Boa wanted to go and do this car in 1978, BMW were happy to give them the go ahead, the permission to not only do it, but sell them through their own dealerships. Now this particular example of the car has been completely restored, nut and bolt restoration and the dealer says it's one of the best they've ever seen, not only of this car but of any restoration in general. It is immaculate in every place, even the boot looks like brand new, or better than brand new in fact. it drive? That's the big question. Well, I've got to tell you, it's really good. The um, steering is incredibly light. This is typical of BMWs of the 80s. The uh, E30 was as well. It's way too many turns lock to lock and absolutely feather light to touch. So it's one finger steering, genuinely. The pedals are really well spaced. They are a floor mounted accelerator and top hinged clutch and brake. Everything's weighted really nicely and the gear shift has the perfect, and I mean perfect, weight of throw to it. So working through the gears and enjoying that wonderful rasp from the straight six motor is an absolute joy. There's a tiny bit of notchiness just as you get into the very gears themselves, but otherwise it's a dream come true changing the gears with this gearbox. The brakes are sharp, the suspension is quite soft, but you kind of expect that in a convertible, you don't want harsh suspension in a soft top. And visibility with these narrow pencil thin A posts is brilliant and with the top down you can see absolutely everything. Top up though, it is a little harder because that's a lot of black canvas around the back of the car. 
Now the car was designed by Paul Brack, who you might know better for his work at Mercedes-Benz, but he was also a very big cheese in the BMW world as well. And he used his typical light touch of sporty but aggressive spare styling to give it the most beautiful looks. It sets the style of BMWs to come for many, many generations. That shark nose grill, the Hofmeister kink, it really is a defining car. And as you drive it, all the controls are perfectly placed. The steering wheel is big, but it feels nice in your hands. And the stalks for indicators and wipers are just at the right place for your fingertips as well. Everything is really ergonomically laid out just to perfection, frankly. So thank you for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this little ride out on what is perhaps the last sunny day of spring before the snow comes in this amazing and beautifully restored example of a 323i E21 Boa Bauer. I don't know how you say it. It's one of those weird words that, however you pronounce it, you'll get a dozen comments saying you're wrong. Top Cabriolet, not convertible, not Targa. If you've enjoyed this, please do hit like and subscribe as always, and join us again next time driving something completely different.